began with teams from 141 countries involved in over 500 qualifying matches. Countries from around the world competing for the right to lift a 14-inch tall solid gold trophy, competing to win the world's most popular sports tournament. began in Chicago on June the 17th, 1994. For the first time in World Cup history, the eyes of the soccer world are on the United States of America as we prepare to open the 1994 World Cup. Este dia, 17 de junio, de 1994, el mundo del fútbol se siente honrado. We will reward with our cheers the courage and skill of all the players. Let us in the process come to appreciate the unity of people throughout the world that this game represents. The World Cup, which for four years had belonged to Germany, was now in a country that had never seen a soccer tournament of such magnitude on their soil. But the Americans and FIFA were determined to make it a total success. The Germans, who'd beaten Argentina in the 1990 final, began their defence against Bolivia, a game that was predictably reserved, with Germany intent on making a solid, rather than spectacular, start. Bertie Vokes was now the German coach, and he and the rest of the world waited until the second half for the first goal of World Cup USA 1994. Thomas Hessler's break beat the offside trap, and Jürgen Klinsmann gave Germany the lead and ultimately secured his team a first-day victory. Bolivia's defeat was compounded by the sending off of Marco Echeverri just minutes after coming on a substitute. But for those who doubted the wisdom of coming to the United States for the greatest sporting show on earth, the post-match scenes were surely enough to prove that the next four weeks would be an outstanding success. Much had been made of the need for Team USA to succeed to a certain degree in order for the tournament to be a success. The Americans were determined to do just that, but their desire was tested when George Brege's 39th minute free kick gave opponents Switzerland the lead in the Pontiac Silverdome in Detroit. But right on half-time, Team USA were level. Another free kick, superbly placed by Eric Winalda. It was an end to the scoring, the United States had started with a point. The tournament's first game in New York was a fascinating affair. The highly professional Italians, backed by a strong local community, against the Cavalier Irish, a team largely collected together from the English League, and one which also boasted a fervent following. This was a match settled by just one goal, Ray Houghton giving Ireland a 1-0 win. this was an important early triumph for the Italians it was the start of an unconvincing first phase
Before the tournament began, Colombia were considered one of the favourites. Even Pele tipped them to do well, but Romania were too good for them. Florin Radachoy put the Romanians ahead after 16 minutes, and George Hadji scored their second with an effort that looked suspiciously like a cross. It was either total perfection or a total fluke. The Colombians showed their abilities in patches, but it was the Romanians who looked as if they would figure strongly in the tournament, even when Valencia pulled the Colombians back to 2-1. Romania, though, confirmed a 3-1 win in the second half with a second for Radachoy. And even though this was their first match of the tournament, there was plenty of cause for celebration. of the Cameroon were great favourites in Italia 90 and their first game with Sweden in Los Angeles was much awaited but Roger Jung gave Sweden an eighth minute lead. The Cameroon persistence though earned an equaliser although Sweden's failure to clear their line was as much a contributory factor to David Embe's equaliser. In Italy the Cameroon had created quite an impact and they were threatening to do so again in the United States. Oman Biek put them 2-1 up in the second half. when Joseph Antoine Bell in Cameroon's goal failed to stop Henrik Larsson's long-range shot, Martin Darlene capitalised and earned Sweden a point from a two-all draw. Brazil's march towards a title their supporters always thought was theirs began against Russia in San Francisco. Romario claimed the honour of their first goal of the tournament, and then saw captain Rye confirm a 2-0 win with a second half penalty. The team spirit, which was a notable attribute throughout the tournament, was given an early airing on the touchline, and the Brazilian bandwagon began its predictable journey. Holland were another pre-tournament favourite, Saudi Arabia apparently there merely to make up the numbers, but Faoud Amin hadn't read the script. He gave the Saudis an 18th minute lead. It was a lead they held until the fifth minute of the second half when Vim Yonk scored with a long-range shot. And with four minutes remaining, a vital error by Saudi goalkeeper Mohamed El Dai allowed substitute Gaston Talman to score Holland's winner. After an unlikely start, Dick Advocar's side had overcome a tricky first hurdle. If the Saudis were a surprise package, the Greeks lived up to their billing as one of the weaker nations in the World Cup. Argentina, as ever, were at the other end of the scale, and Gabriel Batistuta expertly displayed the golf in class with his first of three goals in their opening Group D game. Batistuta's second owed much to the attacking strength of Jose Chameau. By this stage, three first match points were already assured. The latter stages of the game answered one important question. Was Maradona a spent force? This was a more than adequate answer. Batistuta completed his hat-trick with an injury time penalty. The Greeks never recovered in the tournament. For Argentina, it was full steam ahead. Spain had been held to a two-all draw in their first match with South Korea, put extra pressure on them to do well against the Germans, and luck appeared to be with them in Chicago. In the first half, Bodo Elgner, the German goalkeeper, was completely helpless as Goyke Chair took the plaudits for his unlikely success.
The Germans, though, earned a one-all draw with a goal from Jürgen Klinsmann, his second in the tournament. The ball was already over the line when Stefan Effenberg helped it along the way. Two more good opportunities should have seen Klinsmann add to his tally. But even so, the Germans added one more point to the three they'd collected against Bolivia. Coach Bertie Vokes was calmly steering Germany to the second phase. The Nigerians might not have had the largest number of supporters at the tournament, but they certainly had some of the noisiest. And they had much to be proud of as the Nigerians arrived at the World Cup with an impressive record and a team promising inventive attacking football. Against Bulgaria, they showed it. Rashid Yakini scored their first in a 3-0 win. Daniel Amokachi claimed number two after 42 minutes, and at this stage, Bulgaria were giving few, if any, hints of the success that was to come their way later in the tournament. In the second half, Emmanuel Amoniki completed a comprehensive victory for Nigeria. He celebrated enthusiastically and delighted his supporters. This was a game which also included some fine goalkeeping from Peter Rufai, as, unlike the Colombians, Nigeria lived up to their pre-tournament billing. Their journey to the tournament had been beset by visa and flight problems. Once here, they intended to enjoy themselves and entertain as well. When Romania met Switzerland in Detroit, they looked anything but potential quarter-finalists. Alain Souter scored Switzerland's first in an impressive and comprehensive victory. George Hadji did claim an equaliser, but in the second half, Switzerland extended their lead. A bit of a scramble, but the goal scorer, Stefan Schapuzat. Adrian Knup made it 3-1 as the Swiss confirmed a four-point haul from two matches. But there was more to come. Knup scored his second of the game to ensure Switzerland a 4-1 win. A near-post header which infuriated the Romanians, but delighted the Swiss. When Team USA arrived in Los Angeles to play their second game, the country was already enthusiastically behind its team. Colombia had much to prove after defeat by Romania in their first game, but the wave of enthusiasm which continued to push the Americans along brought with it a little good fortune as well. The first goal was an own goal from Andre Escobar, a player who was later to tragically lose his life in a shooting incident after the Colombians had returned home. Ernie Stewart scored a second for the States in the second half, a win which just about assured them of a place in round two, as well as sending Colombia closer towards an early return home. It was a day in which little went right for them. The game will also be remembered for one piece of skill from Marcello Balboa. This was an effort which excited the crowd almost as much as the goals themselves. Colombia did score a consolation goal through Adolfo Valencia, even though Tony Miola did his best to keep a clean sheet. For Colombia, though, there was nothing to celebrate. This was America's day. The temperature in Orlando for Ireland's second game seemed more to Mexico's liking, and so it proved. Luis Garcia gave the Mexicans the lead two minutes before half-time, and he extended their advantage in the second half with another world play shot which Packy Bonner in the Irish goal had little chance with. After the heights of their previous win over Italy, Ireland were back to earth with a bump, defeat and hefty fines after this altercation on the touchline. Substitute John Aldridge was refused permission to join the game by a FIFA official. Aldridge was fined for his part in the row, as was his coach Jack Charlton, after he let his feelings be known in a similar manner. When Aldridge did join the game, he made his mark there too, heading in Jason McAteer's cross. But it wasn't enough to get the Irish out of trouble on the pitch, and it meant their final group game with Norway would be a crucial one. Luis Garcia had made life difficult for the Irish. Romario's form in Brazil's first match had already set him up as a potential star of the tournament, and he continued to take the spotlight with the first against the Cameroon.
Marcio Santos added a second in the second half as Brazil confirmed what most of us thought we already knew. They were good enough to go all the way. This was a game which also brought a first goal of the tournament for Bebeto. In two matches, Brazil had scored five goals and had yet to concede even one. Sweden's tournament sprang into life in Detroit. A Thomas Brolin penalty cancelled out an earlier one for Russia's Oleg Zelenko, and Sweden then went on to record their first win in World Cup 94. Martin Darlin scored twice in the second half, firstly with a stooping header after a cross from the left, and then with a header at full stretch after a cross from the right. Sweden were on their way. Belgium and Holland held 100% records after their first games and Belgium would preserve theirs thanks largely to goalkeeper Michel Prudhomme. Holland were also out of luck throughout the game and they paid for that when Philippe Albert scored the only goal of the match to virtually ensure Belgium's progression to round two. Holland would have to wait until their final group match to know their fate as Prudhomme denied them throughout with his brilliance. As their fans celebrated, Belgium knew their single goal victory against their European neighbours was down to one man. Nigeria's early reputation was enhanced in their second game by an early goal against Argentina from Samson Siasa. The Super Eagles, as they're known, were ahead against the former world champions. But Claudio Canigia showed world-class instincts to score Argentina's equaliser, and he also scored the winner when Nigeria's defence was caught out. But this was to be Diego Maradona's last World Cup game. After the match, Maradona was selected for a drugs test, much to his amusement. But it was a test he failed. Both analysis of the urine sample have proved to be positive. The player Diego Maradona of the Argentinian national team has therefore violated the provisions of the doping control regulations in the match Argentina-Nigeria. Maradona was suspended, his international career was effectively over. Victory for Team USA in Los Angeles would have confirmed their presence in the second round, but bad positioning by goalkeeper Tony Miola allowed Vasily Petrescu to score the only goal of the game and keep the host nation guessing, while the Romanians moved ever closer to achieving the same ambition. Ili Dumitrescu might have extended the Romanians' lead, but shot over after impressively beating his markers and then having only Miola to beat. But that miss inspired a fight back from the Americans. Thomas Dooley sent a near-post header into the side netting, a chance which fooled some of the crowd into at first thinking he'd actually scored. Fullback Paul Caligiuri's shot produced a little Romanian tension. But Romania held on to give themselves six points from three matches. Team USA were left with four. Colombia's best performance of the World Cup was their last game against Switzerland when, ironically, they were all but out of the competition. Theirs had been a troubled tournament with poor performances leading to sinister unrest back home. Herman Gaviria scored their first, and in the second half, John Harold Lozano their second. And for a short while, there was even a slight chance they might just qualify for round two. But despite the celebrations, that was a forlorn hope. Coach Francisco Matarana immediately announced his resignation after the game amidst continuing death threats made towards team members and their families. When the team returned home, the fears of the squad were realised. Andre Escobar was shot dead.
Victory for Spain over Bolivia in Chicago would guarantee them qualification from round two, either as winners or as the second place team. After Guardiola's penalty, the win was comfortably achieved. The lead extended by two second half goals for Caminero. The first, neatly set up by Sergi. But before he could claim his second, Bolivia scored their first goal of the tournament. But in spite of that minor irritation, the Spanish were comfortably through with Caminero second. Ferrer supplied the pass. Spain were into the second phase. The temperature was the main talking point before Germany's final group match in Dallas. After it, the discussions centered around a marvelous South Korean fight back. Germany, though, were well in command in the first half, and Jurgen Klinsmann's goal was the first in 45 minutes of total domination. Klinsmann had now scored in all three of Germany's group games. Karl-Heinz Riedler scored the second after Korean goalkeeper Choi had completely misjudged the flight of the ball. And after that, Klinsmann took his personal tally to four goals for the tournament, with another the goalkeeper just might have done better with. But all that was merely a prelude to the unlikeliest of second halves. The Koreans, who looked to be totally outclassed, scored twice in ten minutes. The first came from Hwang Sun Hong. And that was followed by a thunderous shot from Hong Myung Bo. But somehow the Germans managed to hold their lead. The Koreans headed for home, bathed in glory. The Germans had won their group. Group E was the tightest group of all. Norway and Ireland were fighting for their World Cup lives in New York. The Irish, though, would have to do so without Jack Charlton at hand. He was banned from the touchline after the scenes from the game with Mexico. There were no goals in a tense affair. John Aldridge, who was also at the centre of that Mexican episode, went closest for the Irish after Andy Townsend's cross. And Chettel Rechdal did likewise for Norway, but a draw meant both sides had finished with four points. It also meant the match taking place at the same time between Italy and Mexico would be vital in deciding who reached the second phase from Group E. Italians knew they could actually be eliminated if they failed to find some form and the early signs were good against Mexico Daniele Massaro put them ahead but Bernal's equaliser meant a one-all draw and so all four sides had finished with four points in the group goal scoring was to settle the places Mexico finished top Ireland and Italy had exactly the same record but Ireland's win over Italy in New York gave them second place and Italy only qualified as one of the four best third-place teams from the group phase. Russia's chances of extending their stay had very nearly disappeared by the time they played the Cameroon in San Francisco, but they were to lead the United States with a new record holder in their midst. Oleg Selenko scored five times in their 6-1 win, the most goals ever scored by a single player in one match in the World Cup Finals. Brazil and Sweden were battling for first place in Group B when they met in Detroit, and although no one knew it at the time, this was also a semi-final dress rehearsal. Kenneth Anderson struck first, the first goal Brazil had conceded in the tournament. But in the second half, Romario showed his brilliance to score an equaliser, and a one-all draw meant Brazil won the group, with Sweden as runners-up. 
Brazil might have confirmed that top placing more convincingly, but at the end of this one, both sides were extremely happy. Group F was another tight group, providing another nail-biting finale to the first phase in the heat of Orlando. Holland struck first, Peter van Vossen's tenacity setting up Dennis Bergkamp. Bergkamp's first name was chosen by his parents because they once idolised the great Dennis Law. Perhaps that also accounts for Bergkamp's supreme eye for goal. But the Moroccans were far from out of the competition, and they equalised through Hassan Nader. The points look set to be shared. But Bergkamp set up Brian Roy for an injury time winner. It meant Holland were definitely through, Morocco were definitely out. If the Belgians thought their final group game with Saudi Arabia would be straightforward, they were sadly wrong. The Saudis had threatened to cause an upset in their first match against Holland, and they beat Belgium with surely the best individual goal of the tournament from Saeed Ouaran. This was a goal that proved an early blow from which the Belgians failed to recover and the Saudis might in fact have won the game more comfortably. In the second half, Hamza Falata looked ready to add an impressive second for the Saudis when his nerve failed him at the last. The personal disappointment of that miss was quickly overtaken by news that the 1-0 win had taken the Saudis through to the second phase. Despite defeat, the Belgians were through as well. Nigeria's defeat by Argentina in their second game meant they had to win their last match. The consolation was, it was against Greece. Finidi George opened the scoring with a cheeky lob, a goal which prompted the most unusual celebration of the tournament. Amakachi's goal in the second half made it 2-0 and in fairness to the Greeks this was a shot which would have been unstoppable whoever the opposition as it was the Nigerians celebrated their progression to round two the Greeks left for home with ten goals conceded and none scored in three losing games this was Argentina's first game since Diego Maradona's suspension for failing a drugs test. The world waited to see how they would fare without him, and they struggled, rarely looking capable of beating Mihailov in Bulgaria's goal. Bulgaria recorded their second consecutive win thanks to two second-half goals, the first from Pristo Stoichkov. <laughs> The second, from a corner, came from Nasko Sirikov. Argentina looked a far weaker side without their star, but they were still able to join Nigeria and Bulgaria in the next round. Twenty-four teams came to the first stage, only 16 would continue. But what will always remain is the lasting memory of every match and every team.
instrument of this musical composition known as the World Cup. But with 235 yellow cards and 15 red cards raised, the match officials made their own music. The second phase meant a change to the format of the tournament. It was now sudden death with extra time and penalties to be utilised if required. Germany didn't need either in beating Belgium. Rudy Voller, who'd begun the tournament as a substitute, scored their first. But Belgium levelled three minutes later when Voller's attempt to help out in defence laid on a goal for Georges Grun. Voller's involvement continued when he showed why he's undoubtedly better at the other end of the field. He superbly linked with Jürgen Klinsmann, and Klinsmann's clinical finish restored the German advantage. And it was 3-1 before half-time, when Voller's header was missed by Michel Proudhon, who, until now, had had an excellent tournament in Belgium's goal. But the major moment of controversy in the game came when Josip Weber appeared to be fouled in the penalty area by Thomas Helmer. The referee waved play on. Belgium were later to lodge a formal complaint about the referee's handling of the game. Philippe Albert gave the Germans a tense last minute with a late goal for Belgium which made it 3-2, but the Germans became the first team through to the quarter-finals. Spain and Switzerland in Washington was another game which swung on a refereeing decision. The Swiss thought Goyke Chea was offside as he ran back and Iero went through, but play was allowed to continue. This proved the first of three Spanish goals. The second came from Luis Enrique, who took advantage of the large amount of space he was given to find the corner of the net. The Swiss looked unlikely to recover from that, and their task was then made impossible by a penalty from Baguristein. Spain were through, and comfortably so. Saudi Arabia had plenty of support in Dallas, but Sweden had too much class. Martin Darlene scored after just five minutes, but the Swedes couldn't add to this until the second half. Then, at the 50th minute, Kenneth Anderson squeezed his shot past Al Dyer. An adventurous attacking run that had become the Saudis' trademark throughout the tournament brought a goal for Al Ghashayan to make it 2-1. But Sweden confirmed their place in the last eight with another from Anderson. The Saudis, though, who'd begun the tournament as makeweights, could now leave with their heads held high. Maradona this was an agonizing afternoon unable to help his country he watched as Romania took the lead in Los Angeles through Ili Dumitrescu a penalty five minutes later from Batistuta put Argentina level but that state of affairs lasted just two minutes 
George Hadji and Dumitrescu combined to give Dumitrescu his second goal of the game. In the second half, Hadji made it 3-1, and from here on in, it seems Romania were cruising to the quarter-finals. Abel Balbo did give the Argentines some hope after Pernea's mistake, but Romania held on, and a side that couldn't win without Diego Maradona was on its way home. Orlando proved the end of the road for the Irish dream. Two mistakes sealed their defeat against Holland, the first from Terry Phelan to let Mark Overmars in, allowed Dennis Bergkamp to put the Dutch ahead. The second slip came from goalkeeper Packy Bonner, who allowed Wim Jonk's long-range shot through his hands. Ireland were unable to recover from that, and so an adventure that had seen victory over Italy, public rows with FIFA, and a large following smiling its way around America, had sadly come to an end. After more than 40 matches, it was obvious World Cup soccer in the United States was a total success, so it was fitting that the US team's most important fixture in their history should be on Independence Day, July the 4th. But a match pitting their spirited fight against Brazil's famous skills was marred by this. Leonardo's instant and violent reaction to a tussle with Tab Ramos could only result in one decision from the referee, a red card. Leonardo was later suspended for the rest of the tournament. The incident cast a shadow over the sight of the USA, riding their luck, almost taking the lead, and finally falling to a goal 21 minutes from the end, from Babetta. Brazil were through to the quarter-finals, Team USA were proud losers. Italy's progress to this stage had been effective, but generally not impressive. And in Boston, they received a jolt from the Nigerians, which finally knocked them from their slumbers. Emmanuel Amoniki put Nigeria ahead from a corner, and 1-0 was the way it stayed until the very last minute. Roberto Baggio then saved Italy and forced extra time. Italy's escape was completed by Baggio's extra-time penalty. This gave them a 2-1 win. Nigerian despair meant Italian delight. Bulgaria's inauspicious start to the tournament had now been overtaken by a run of form at the right time. Against Mexico and New York, Christo Stoichkov seemed to enforce that as he continued his regular scoring pattern. A penalty from Alberto Garcia Aspi meant extra time and penalties, but not before a change of hardware at one end of the field. After a lengthy delay, a new goal was installed, and it was fully operational for the penalty shootout. At its culmination, Jordan Lechkov was Bulgaria's hero as they went through at Mexico's expense. It meant that more would be seen of Stoichkov, but Jorge Campos and his amazing Technicolor shirts were on their way home. It has been said that goalkeepers are ordinary athletes who do extraordinary things. In 1994, these football specialists displayed superhuman instincts on no less than 666 occasions.
Boston on July the 9th staged the first quarter-final. The colour that had engulfed the tournament was still there, but now there was tension too. Italy scored first, Dino Baggio's shot beating Zubi Zaretta as Italy began to show the sort of form their own countrymen had expected throughout the tournament. Gianluca Pagliuca was looking confident in goal as well as the Spaniards strived to find a way back into the game. That came in the second half when Goicochea let a pass slide under his foot and Caminero made good use of the good fortune inadvertently created by his teammate. This was another match which seemed destined for extra time until another late intervention from Roberto Baggio. After his saving goal against Nigeria came a late winner against Spain. Italy were heading towards the semi-finals. But they were to play the rest of the tournament without Mauro Tassotti, who was suspended after video evidence showed what the referee had missed, a blow to the face of Luis Enrique. Tassotti was given a record ban of eight matches. Enrique sustained a broken nose and finished on the losing side. Holland and Brazil had failed to make any sort of impact in the first half of their quarter-final in Dallas, but Romario changed all that in the second half by putting Brazil ahead. Ten minutes later, Bebeto made it 2-0 as the Dutch waited for an offside decision that never came. Instead, after Bebeto had scored, we were treated to his now familiar baby-rocking celebration. He'd become a father for the third time, five days earlier. But just as it seemed Brazil were easing their way into the last four, Holland staged a comeback with two goals in ten minutes. Bergkamp scored the first, and then Aaron Winter claimed the equaliser from a corner from Mark Overmars. It set up a superb finale capped by Branco's brilliantly struck free kick for Brazil. The favourites had been given a late scare, but they were through. of the quarter-final stage came in New York, Bulgaria beating Germany the world champions. Germany went ahead with a penalty from Lota Mateus, but they were to go out of the tournament to the unlikeliest team to reach the last four. The Germans thought they'd established a two-goal lead when Rudi Voller found the net, but this effort was ruled offside. With Germany still ruining that decision, Stoichkov scored an equaliser, a stunning free kick from 20 yards. Bulgaria's winner was spectacular. Jordan Lechkov's diving header was the goal that eliminated the defending champions. That was a worthy cause for celebration. was the order of the day in San Francisco as Romania and Sweden played out a game that only really came to life in the last 11 minutes of normal time. Sweden went ahead, Thomas Brolin completing a well-worked free kick. But Romania waited until the last minute before finding their equaliser. Florin Radachoy forcing extra time after another free kick. then took the lead, Radachoy scoring his second of the match. But that was cancelled out by Kenneth Anderson's goal two minutes from the end of extra time. It all meant penalties and even they finished level after the first round of five. But in sudden death, Thomas Rivelli was Sweden's hero as he saved from Miedrag Bella de Dic.
July the 13th was semi-final day. On the East Coast, Italy were playing the surprise team of the remaining four, Bulgaria, in the giant stadium. Bulgaria had proved their ability with that quarter-final victory over Germany, but Italy proved a tougher proposition. Roberto Baggio, who had so emphatically come to life in the tournament's later stages, took advantage of some mediocre defending to score two goals that effectively sealed Italy's passage to the final in the first half. It also meant that coach Arrigo Sacchi could afford a smile after being under pressure for so long. Bulgaria's only success was a penalty for Stoichkov, but that proved the end of his prolific goal-scoring exploits in the tournament. Italy were through to soccer's biggest occasion. On the west coast on the same day, Brazil and Sweden were playing in Los Angeles for the right to join Italy. For most of the match, Sweden defended, Brazil failed to score, and Thomas Rivelli proved an effective last line of defence for Sweden. One goal was enough, and it came for Brazil. Romario's downward header ensuring the favourites would be Italy's opponents in that final. Brazil celebrated their success, but for Sweden there was now only third place to play for. But Ravelli was to be complimented for a fine individual performance. Before the final, the two beaten semi-finalists played for that third-place honour. Sweden beat Bulgaria convincingly by four goals to nil. Please congratulate FIFA's third-place team in these world championships. There was certainly pleasure in victory for the Swedes, but still to come was the biggest game in football. the 17th in Los Angeles after 51 games and four weeks of competition there were two teams left Italy and Baggio against Brazil and Romario so this then the most important game of them all both sides in their traditional colors Italy in blue shirts Brazil in yellow it's been a cagey opening so far but there's a chance for Romario Paluca was behind it and none too happy with his defensive cover Massaro, a chance for Italy, the first of the game. Well, that was their first of the game. He should have done better. So we still await the first goal of the game. Romario, could he provide it? Paluca's behind it. Well, that's two good chances for him now. So the team's back out on the field then for the second half, an important 45 minutes, the most important that these players will ever play. Brazil coming forward again, another long-range effort, and Paluca loses it well. That could have been his most embarrassing moment ever. He makes a joke of it, but he's mightily relieved. Here it comes again. His heart must have been in his mouth. And there is the final whistle. It means extra time. Italy nil, Brazil nil. We go through another 30 minutes. Brazil coming forward again, Paluca. well he should have come out for that one, Bebeto's there, Romario's there, and Paluca. well he recovers. That could have been embarrassing, he had an embarrassing moment towards the end of normal time. He recovered then, he recovers now. Dunga, but Italy recovering again, Baggio now with some space, good shot, 
Good save from Taffarel. Space now for Zinho. But again, Paluca makes the save. We're heading towards penalties, unless Brazil can do something here. Romario! How did he miss that? I don't think even he knows. The cross from Cafu was quite superb, and Romario, well, really, he should have scored there. So for the first time, the World Cup final goes to penalties. No goals in 120 minutes of football, and the World Cup final now will be decided by a shootout. It certainly wasn't the most exciting of finals. Brazil had a couple of chances, most notably through Romario, Italy through Massaro and Baggio, but now it's penalties. The Brazilians beginning to psych themselves up, and that is the scene. That is where the destiny of the World Cup will be decided, and these two men are at the centre of it all. They look quite relaxed, but one of them will be disappointed. So the first penalty then falls to Franco Baresi. And he's missed. So the early advantage immediately goes to Brazil. Marcio Santos for Brazil. And that squares it up. Two penalties gone. Both have been missed. Demetrio Albertini. He's only 22. What a responsibility for him. Calm as you like. So 1-0 then to Italy. And it's Romario for Brazil. And that's one all. Alborigo Evani for Italy at one all. 2-1 to Italy. And the responsibility now falls back to Brazil. Branco's had a great tournament. 2-2. Daniele Massaro. Saved by Taffarel. So Dunga then for Brazil. And they could have one hand on the trophy. And he scores. So Roberto Baggio has had such a great tournament. He now, the man left with the responsibility of keeping Italy in the World Cup. And he's missed. Brazil are the 1994 world champions. Of all the people to miss, Roberto Baggio does for Italy. And the celebrations can begin. Well, as much as they celebrate, you must feel sorry for the Italians. Really, that is no way to lose a World Cup final, but it had to be done. And these boys are celebrating. Carlos Alberto Pereira, the coach, has been under pressure. He won't feel it now. Well, they've shown camaraderie all the way through the tournament, and they show it right at the end as the victors. So this then, the most famous and most poignant moment in world football. The moment the winning captain lifts aloft the World Cup trophy. An embrace from João Havelange and the Brazilians ready to receive their medals and Dunga ready to receive the World Cup trophy. Whatever the merits of that penalty shootout, you have to say the Brazilians have been the most impressive of the teams in the tournament, and on that basis, this is fully deserved. So the pre-tournament favourites had succeeded. The new breed had been supported by one of their previous champions, and a country that celebrates like no other could begin the party. Brazil were the 1994 World Cup champions. Oh.